So I've got this fan on the bench tonight. It's out of a Caterpillar RD6 I'm working on right now, serial number 2H1768. And the reason why this fan is showing up in this video is because it's pretty broken. And what I mean by that, you can see the center hub has come completely disconnected from the outer fan spider. This is kind of a common problem on the earlier three-cylinder cats. The reason for this failure lies in the design of the fan itself. On each side of the fan spider, Caterpillar put a round disc coupling that actually joins the fan spider to the center fan hub. And the reason those flexible couplings are put in there is because these fans are gear driven off the timing gears behind the front cover of the diesel engine. And because they're gear driven, they're exposed to a lot of engine vibration and shock loads due to sudden RPM changes, stuff like that. So those round disc couplings are just kind of a way to help uh, isolate the fan spider and fan blades from from those shock loads. So uh, but you can see on this one, like this piece can be pulled right out. This fan actually has uh, solid rubber disc couplings in it, uh, flexible discs. And this is the first time that um, I personally have seen all rubber flexible discs. Now, usually it's what I call a belted style disc, which is what this is. And the reason I call this a belted style disc is because it's made of a material that resembles belting. Um, you can see there's like a heavy fabric weave in there with uh, hard rubber laminated between the layers. Um, this is what's in the parts books that I have for the entire 2H series RD6 and D6 production run. Now I don't know if these rubber ones are an updated style, like a later style uh, replacing design, or if they're an aftermarket piece or what, I don't know. At any rate, they've totally failed. So I was able to source a pair of the uh, brand new belted style flexible discs that I plan on putting in this fan. And we'll tear this fan down. We'll get the broken pieces out of it and do a pretty good uh, condition check on everything, replace as needed, and hopefully get it put back together and uh, and have it give a pretty good service life. So now that I've explained the failure, we'll just get this one out of the way. And we'll drag this guy in here. This is also an RD6 fan, or most of one. And this is just one out of my parts pile. I took all the bolts out of it so we can just kind of take it down real quick and get a pretty good idea of what's uh, what's involved in uh, disassembling one of these. <coughs> Excuse me. It's really a pretty simple setup, but if you've never been into one, sometimes it's kind of nice to know beforehand, you know, what to expect. So we'll just go through it real quick with this one. So the first piece you got is this uh, uh, center hub disc. Um, there's one just like this on the back side. So that's the first piece that comes off. Second piece that comes off is this outer support ring. And again, this is made of steel, and there's one just like it on the back side, so it makes it pretty easy to remember. And now we have the first flexible disc. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good disc. Uh, this whole, the, both the discs in this fan are in pretty good condition, so I'm certainly not gonna throw them away anytime soon. They do have some wear on them, but they're, uh, they're good spares to have on hand, so we'll be keeping these around. And one thing I wanna show you with this disc is you'll see inside every one of the bolt holes is a round steel sleeve. And you definitely wanna have these sleeves in there. Like the new discs that I got do not have any sleeves in the holes. So what I'll have to do is take the steel sleeves out of the broken discs from that other fan and I'll press those in these um, and we'll be, we'll be set up to go. But uh, these steel sleeves uh, give the, the, uh, the through bolts a positive surface to clamp down on and they help to protect the flexible discs from being squashed out or damaged when the bolts are tightened down. So it's pretty important to make sure you have those in there, but I just kind of wanted to cover that real quick. So anyway, that was the first flexible disc. Next, the fan spider will come off, and we have the center steel disc. And about all that's left now is the second flexible disc, and like I said earlier, there's a steel support ring on the back side and a steel center disc back there too. So it's a pretty simple construction. What you'll find on one side of the spider will also be on the other. So. Um, 
that kind of makes it easier. But so I wanted to get this center disc out, and I just kind of wanted to uh, show you. Uh, this acts as a pretty good representation or a pretty good indicator of how much movement actually goes on between the different components in these fans. And you can see the outside diameter of this disc is really shiny. Uh, that's from the center hub uh, flexing inside of the fan spider and all that movement is transmitted through those flexible discs. You can even see if I can get it in the light just right, there's actually quite a few witness marks in the shined up area of this disc from the belted surfaces of those flexible discs. So it just kind of, it, it serves as a good indicator of how much movement really goes on inside these fans. You wouldn't think there'd be that much for as rigid as those discs are, but uh, they actually do a pretty good job. So, so that's about it for the breakdown. Um, kind of another reason I did this video was to pass along another piece of information that I learned from a couple of old knowledgeable fellows that were uh, machine operators back in the day, old cat skinners, and they made their living on these old machines for years and years. And we were talking about uh, some failures that, that they'd seen and stuff like that and telling old stories. And they got to talking about how the fans can break and actually go into the radiator cores on the early three-cylinder cats. And they said one thing they did to try and make the fans last longer that they claim actually work pretty well was uh, when they're shutting the machines off and they close the fuel control lever to stop the diesel engine they just reach around right away and also open the compression release and what that does it uh, takes the compression out of the engine so as it's uh, winding down as the engine is coming to a stop it's not having the pistons pushing up against the compression strokes and sending shock loads through these flexible couplings and into the fans. So it's just kind of a uh, gentler way to shut them down. And they said once they got in the habit of doing that, the uh, failures of their uh, flexible couplings and their fans pretty much went down to nothing. So I guess it makes sense in my mind. Um, I think it's just good practice. That's how I've started shutting my uh, three-cylinder cats down. And it, uh, it makes a lot more noise then shutting them down under full compression, you can really hear the air leaking past the valves when you got the compression release open and it's it's winding down. But um, you can tell by watching the fan that there's a lot, uh, it's, it's just a lot easier on the fan. It's a lot easier on the couplings and the fan blades aren't dancing around so bad. So like I said, in, in my mind it makes sense. I think it's just good practice. I personally do it. If you wanna try it yourself, I mean, feel free. You're not gonna hurt anything, so. So that's really about it for this video. Um, I hope I didn't bore you too bad, as usual. And as always, thanks for watching.